Hello there, ladies, gentlemen and unicorns. I welcome you to a little series of videos where I'll be looking in detail at how I made the Ludum Dare 41 keynote a reality. Follow me on a journey through pre-production, procrastination and proprietary software. This is the making of the Ludum Dare 41 keynote. First, we will look into how everything started and the script writing process. And everything started with an email I got from Mike Kasperzak, the founder and runner of Ludum Dare. I received his message shortly after Ludum Dare 39 and it was whether I was interested in keynoting Ludum Dare 41. Well, of course I was. And I thought, yeah, ideas will surely come, there's still plenty of time. Yeah. It was 12 weeks before Ludum Dara 41 when I asked Mike for advice because I only had a few, yes, sketchy ideas. And he responded with some great advice and that was to look at the concerns or what's important to veterans of Ludum Dara and regular jammers. But how should I know what their concerns are? So I did what every sensible person does. Uh, I just asked around on Twitter. I wanted to know what jammers struggled with the most and thanks to signal boosting the tweet reached a lot of Ludum Dare participants who were happy to answer. I categorized each reply and finding inspiration was among the biggest issues for many people. And it was decided my keynote would be about inspiration. Come with me and you won't regret it! I collected my personal approaches of getting inspired and then had this list that I trimmed and pruned down to a couple of key points. Finding inspiration in other games, among your hobbies, from personal experiences, in randomness or in taking a new perspective such as from your younger self or with a certain person in mind. Once I had these points, I could start writing the script. I had this wild idea of visiting myself in different versions or at different ages uh, and some time travel that was inspired by the angry video game nerd's Christmas special or especially his Adam's Family bit. Were you expecting uh, maybe uh, the Ninja Turtles? <laughs> and when you're planning on time traveling, well, you gotta bring a companion, right? I've always been a big fan of the Back to the Future series and interestingly I identified much more with Doc Brown than with Marty. Great Scott. So I had the points I wanted to make and the characters and I felt comfortable enough to start writing the script. And you know you're on the right tracks when the script pretty much writes itself. I just had to keep up and keep things tight and terse and tidy but apart from that, it was just like a big straight. After just four days, I was happy with the final version, which is still labeled intermediate version, oh well, and could start with the pre-production. When I'm script writing, I don't waste a single time on thinking about the execution because I want to stay in the story and not get distracted. But once I was finished and put on my producer hat, I was just worried. There were a lot of split screens throughout the script. Pretty much the whole script was just talking to myself, different characters, uh, effects works, yeah, just, just the whole thing. And I have never done anything like it before. So it was time to follow my own advice. So whatever is essential to your game, but you've never done it before, uh, my advice is to do it early and to just see if you can do it. And that's what I did. I made a prototype, a quick test scene that I shot in my home office just to get an idea of all the challenges I had. So here's the clip of this little test shoot. Uh, by the way, Future Phil is the one with the cool slick visor. Roll the clip. Oh boy. Precisely, this is you, us. As a kid, before the vast knowledge of games polluted your originality. Hey there, buddy. Huh? What kind of game would you love to play? Super Mario Land. Yeah, I know, I, I see that's what you're playing there, but, but apart from that, 
anything that doesn't exist yet? Super Mario Land 2. Okay, right, we're in 1991 here, so it, yeah. Is there anything you would love to play that doesn't exist by 2018? How should I know? I'm just a kid. Were we really that narrow-minded as a kid? He has a point, though. Ah. Then let's get back further before you got that damn Game Boy. Ah, now that's much better, huh? Wholesome, open-ended, unstructured play. Ah, so you like playing with your Legos? Mm-hmm. Is that you in the house? Mm-hmm. And that is? Zombie. And you're fighting the zombie? Mm-hmm. So you like to build your own blocky little house and fight blocky little zombies on a blocky little adventure, that's right? Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds like a pretty good game inspiration to me. Yeah, it's Minecraft. We've already been there. Crap! Maybe I, I'm doing this all wrong. Overall, it worked surprisingly well, but there were a few apparent issues. Most apparent was that characters got cut off by the split screen. If I didn't want to fix this frame by frame later, I'd have to avoid overlaps while shooting as much as possible. Further, I didn't leave enough time for the other character to speak their line. I could fix some of that in the edit by speeding up or slowing down the video between the lines, but there was not much leeway until that practice would become very obvious. Then, characters supposed to be talking to each other did not always look in the right direction. To get those eye lines right, I needed to imagine where a character was standing, what they were saying, how and when, and what they were looking at and how they'd move around. In short, having a clear vision for each scene as it plays out is essential. And for that, you make storyboards. To help me figuring out the intricacies of each scene of each shot, I relied heavily on storyboards. They are a great tool to get a very concrete understanding of how a scene plays out, where to put the camera, the blocking, the framing. For those unfamiliar with the term, blocking means to decide where the characters are standing and moving in relation to the camera as a scene plays out. And you do this with storyboards because on paper it's very cheap, it's very easy, you can try out things and yeah, it's just much faster than going on the set and then deciding where to put down the camera. A storyboard is like a template of how the final shot should look like. It doesn't have to be pretty, I just need it for myself to understand how to shoot something and don't have to waste a single thought on this when I'm on set. For example, here's a snippet of the scene with bookish fill and the corresponding storyboard panels. Wait, wait, is this me again? Yes, but in a different dimension. Hey Phil, this doesn't have to do anything with gaming. I tried to keep the number of shot changes down to a minimum without the film becoming too boring or too samey looking because it all takes time and effort, which you don't usually have, especially when you're doing this all by yourself. For each scene you have to set up the camera, set up the lights, set up the microphone, check the lighting, check the audio levels, check if everything is in focus or not. And then get dressed and do your lines and then with a different character do it all over again and then set up the next shot and this all costs time. Uh, by the way, the hardest thing to block and to lay out was the penultimate scene with future fill and current fill in front of the big bookshelf. Here's a top-down sketch of the final blocking of the scene shot by shot. Fill and future fill would start against the wall, with a shelf to the right that allows for a nice insert with Connie on the other side of the room. Then Phil steps forward as future Phil looks for something to sit on. Following that, it's just Phil against the bookshelf and a close-up of the book. 
Next, the camera pulls back to introduce the double shot of Phil and future Phil with some close-ups in between. When Phil exits towards the camera, I cut to a close-up of future Phil so that the reverse wide shot makes sense and also sets up Phil and future Phil next to each other to match their positions in the final scene. Oh good. And as I was working on the storyboards, I realized that I needed to think about the props and the costumes that I would need to fabricate or order so that they would arrive in time for the shoot. But that's a topic for the next video. Until then, thank you for your interest, thank you very much for watching, and if you want to support me in making my videos, why not become a Patreon supporter? Or if that's not your thing, you can support me with a one-off donation Maybe buy me a candy bar or some coffee. Links in the description. Until then, see you.